there's no other feeling in life that I've ever found that is even close to that. Things slow down so slow. Seems like eight seconds takes a half an hour. You need to be in sync with him. It's more like you're dancing with the horse. If you're not in sync with him, they have so much more power than what you do. You're really gonna take a beat. The bucking horse has been there since man first tried to get on a horse. The natural horsemanship goes back thousands of years. This area, and particularly Miles City, had the Bronc heritage. And that's why Miles City and the Bucking Horse Hill were a natural fit. One of the biggest values of the Bucking Horse Sale is that it was a rodeo school for all of the young rough stock riders. This was their rodeo school, because they didn't have rodeo schools back then. So they would come to Miles City where they could get on as many horses as they could take. Now there are now other bucking horse sales throughout the country, but there's still just one Miles City bucking horse sale. You know, they used to sell hundreds of horses at it, and out of them hundreds, there'd be a handful of them that would make it. Now, what they're selling is just a few horses, and they're actually bred to buck. But none of it's a given. None of it's a given. You have to bring out from a horse what, what it's bred to be. Bring the nature out and channel it and funnel it in the right direction. 15 minutes before it starts, we start loading them into the chute. When they come in the chute, they're just like a basketball player or a football player. When they step on the court or on the football field, it's game day. We put a neck rope on them, put the flank on them, and then the guy will get his saddle and put his saddle on, and uh, right before he's gonna go, he'll cinch his saddle up and get in there. Go. A cowboy has to, they say, mark the horse out. The cowboy spurs has to be over the point of the shoulder. Doing this gets you in time with the horse. So as the horse kicks, you're cannel boarding. You're bringing your feet back almost to the cannel. And then as the horse comes back to the front feet coming to the ground, you try and beat him to the ground. Things slow down so slow. It seems like eight seconds takes a half an hour. You move into the swells, which helps keep you in the saddle, and you absorb some of that shock. If you can get right on that pivot point, there's a quiet eye of a storm. Those great rides, whether they're the ones that you make or the ones that are made on your buck and horses, they're the ones where every jump, you're not sure if you're gonna make it the next jump. You got movement and movement. This beautiful orchestration of movement for eight seconds. They come together and they actually dance. They're dancing partners. We're doing it because we love it and we love the horses. I tell my wife all the time too, she says, what do you like about rodeo? And I say, everything, all of it, I love it.
I've always been the type of guy that just likes the basics and the true dirt and honesty of life, the sweat, the blood, the tears of rodeo. Saddle Brunk represents rodeo because it's real, it's pure. There's no working event that you can take from rodeo and put in the hills except bronc riding and the roping events. The part that grabs your heart is that cowboy 40 miles from camp and his horse blows up. And he's got to get him rode or walk, all right? Everybody can kind of identify with that. Saddle bronc riding is the whole crux, heart, spirit, symbolism of rodeo. If I travel, the one thing people know about Mile City is the bucking horse sale. And what you usually hear is, oh, that's on my bucket list. You know, I gotta go to the bucking horse sale. A town needs that sense of pride in who they are that goes forth. That sense of value and worth and just being proud of where you've come from and who you are. Miles City still represents and always will cowboys. That really is who we are. And that's why I, I so believe in history. It's a part of who Miles City sees themselves and expresses themselves. If you just make it an event, it becomes shallow. If you just promote it as a cowboy Mardi Gras, it becomes shallow. But when you show what it's contributed to the culture for that period of time, then it has a foundation and a depth. And you can put statues on a foundation. A community thrives because of that, even if it's just for that brief moment in the sun. And that's what the bucking horse sale became.